Thanks for joining us for today's message. If you'd like to support this resource and others like it, you can do so by visiting our website, thechapel.cc, and select the giving option that works best for you. Enjoy the message. You've been overlooked, passed up, and skipped over. No one is hedging their bet on you. But what they don't realize is that you've been made for significance. Let's give them the surprise of a lifetime. Never underestimate an underdog. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now listen, let me take, take out your worship guide because I want to jump right in. You know how crazy stoked I get when we start talking about a new message series. So here's the idea. Very few of us love the thought that we have something, an obstacle or something in front of us and people may look at us and go, man, for him or her, that's a long shot. Or what happens is people see us in a certain situation, whether the situation we were thrust into or we created a situation, but we want to do better for ourselves. And we look and we say, wow, look at what's in front of me. This is a long shot. And what's worse is that at times we look at the things around us, whether it's relationally, spiritually, financially, it doesn't matter. We look at things around us and we say, man, I see myself as a long shot. So for the next couple of weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to go, what does it look like for God to take us from maybe a situation that's a long shot, or how we see ourselves as a long shot, or how people see us as a long shot, and allow God to move us from being a long shot to God's sure shot. How, do, how are we going to do that for the next couple of weeks? And for the, listen, this series, if you will allow it, if you'll just lean in a little bit, on what God's word is saying, we're going to discover how to move from being a long shot to God's sure shot. Now listen, there are so many great stories about long shots. I just want to read one because it's awesome. You ready? He lost his mother at age nine, lost his fiance and sister when he was 26. He failed at his first business venture at the age of 21 and filed bankruptcy. Two years later, he started his political career, and he ran for state legislature and lost. Was rejected by law school twice. He bounced back and started a business on borrowed money from a banker that was a friend of his, and he was bankrupt within nine months of that business venture. At 28, he was defeated as speaker for the state legislature. He ran for U.S. House of Representatives and lost at age 33. He ran again at age 39 and lost again. At age 45, he ran for the U.S. Senate and lost. At age 47, he lost the race for his party's vice presidential nomination. He lost. At 49, he ran for U.S. Senate again and lost. But at age 51, he was this person. Yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Our 16th president of the United States, Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah, he went from being a long shot to being somebody who, wow, and we love this story when we look at it. Listen, we love this story, Abe Lincoln, we, all that he had done for this country, all the things that he changed for this country, for the good. And we look, but what we don't know is how it all started as a long shot. We're going to look at, a, there are many stories in the Bible. But to use this story as a template from God moving us from a long shot situation or a long shot mentality or a long shot, the way people perceive us as being a long shot to, to being God's sure shot. There's one story that sticks out and we all know it and it's incredibly motivational. We all want to kind of be this person in some situation or another. It's just so inspiring. It's this. As the Philistine, the Goliath, the giant, 
As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. What I love about that story is we pick it up where David is just going, oh my goodness. You don't hear David say, look at the giant. Oh my God, this guy is bigger than I thought, guys. It's going to take a little bit more. What you find here a classic story that we all know to some level. What you find is David is not moving out. David isn't running from a battle. David runs to the battle line. David isn't intimidated by what's in front of him. David moves to the battle line. David isn't scared about what's in front of him. David moves to the giant that he has to slay. This is, what, this is what we love about this story. Who doesn't want to kill a giant? Who doesn't want to kill or overcome an obstacle? Here we go. Start tracking. Who, who, doesn't, who doesn't want to have some kind of issue that's going on in their life in one area or another and cut right through it and not be in fear of it but chase it and conquer it? But what we don't know sometimes is how the whole thing started. How the whole thing started for David, who might be one of the greatest long shot stories in all of the Bible. We read David and the giant, the kid with a couple of rocks and a slingshot. But what my, some of us may not know is you talk about a long shot. So for a little bit today, I wanna lay the groundwork for where we're going. I want you to lean in because God's word, which is his voice, will change your life. It'll give you a new perspective. It'll give you encouragement. It'll challenge you. We have no idea how the odds were stacked against David. To really understand how God moves David from being a long shot to a giant killer. To, to a king who conquered more land and moved the kingdom of God forward more than any other king in the Bible. You got to go back to the beginning. You got to go back to how it all started. So here it is. There's this tribe of people called the Israelites, the Jewish people, and they have a king. His name is Saul. Saul is a mighty man. They said he's a mighty man of valor. And a man of war since his youth. Because it's the Old Testament, we had prophets. Prophets meant in the Old Testament that God spoke to certain men and women and they would talk to God's people. Because of Jesus dying and resurrecting from the cross, we now have the ability to hear from God ourselves. Amen? But back then in the Old Testament, it was select men and women. God is speaking to this prophet named Samuel and he says, now listen, Saul was great. But Saul's got a problem. Every time lately you tell him to go do something, Saul starts to treat Samuel, the representative of God, he starts to treat Samuel like a suggestion committee. Samuel says, listen, I want you to go and conquer this land. And I want you to kill all the livestock. Saul goes out. He's victorious because he has God's blessing on his life, and he sees all the livestock. God said, kill all the livestock. Saul gets ready, and he goes, hold on a second. That's a lot of good-looking sheep and goats. That's a lot of good animals there. You know what? I don't know if I truly want to. So the idea here is he's not completely obedient. He's just in the areas of obedience that he can start leaning in. He's obedient in the areas he can understand. He's obedient in the areas that he agrees with. But when, he, when he's told to do something by God and he doesn't understand it or it doesn't feel good or it's inconvenient, Saul doesn't do it. Back then, there were people like that. Not today, but back then, there were people like that. <laughs> all of a sudden, God tells Samuel, go kill all the livestock. Tell him. Tell Saul. Saul goes, ah, hold on. Well, over and over this happened. And in time, God speaks to Samuel, 
the prophet and says, Saul will no longer be king. This is what happens. Samuel the prophet tells Saul, but now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. Saul doesn't have a heart for God because a heart for God, regardless of imperfection, always wants what God wants. Saul no longer just wanted what God wanted. Saul started to want what he wanted. So all of a sudden, this story gets so, just so weaving so many principles about moving from a long shot situation or being a long shot or people seeing you and I as a long shot. There's so many little principles. All of a sudden, hey, I'm done with Saul, God says. I'm done with him taking things into his own hands. I'm now going to search for a guy who wants a heart like mine. He says, for the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Saul, because you have not kept the Lord's command, I'm taking the kingdom away from you. Key. The key here is God is now searching for the perfect person. No. God is now searching for the most talented. No. God is searching now for the most intellectual. No. God is searching for the person who has a heart that's oriented and that's pointed towards him alone. That's what God is searching for. It's no longer you, Saul. But I got a guy in mind. I know a guy. He starts, God tells Samuel, listen, I found the guy and he is the son of Jesse. But you're going to have to travel to Bethlehem. Keep that city in mind. Something else significant happened in Bethlehem, didn't it? But you got to go to this city, Bethlehem. He, Jesse is there. And the next king, the guy who's after my heart, he comes from Jesse's house. So Samuel takes his assistants and they go to Bethlehem. They go to Jesse. Now when a prophet of the Old Testament would come to a town, there was only two things that could happen. Either the prophet brought, brought a message from God saying, you guys are messing up, you're going to burn. <laughs> or you guys are doing really well, here's a blessing. You had a 50-50 shot, okay? <laughs> Samuel gets to the city and the people, I want you to read it, 1 Samuel chapter 16. And the people like freak out, they're like, ah, Samuel's here. So what did we do? What did we do wrong? Everybody. He's got, everybody's got an issue. Oh, well, well, well. He says, no, 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 I come in peace. You're about to hear from the Lord, for a king will be raised up from Jesse's house. Now tradition says that he had to take an animal and sacrifice it and cleanse, because it's the Old Testament, and cleanse the boys in Jesse's house from their sins. And then after they sacrifice this animal... Part of the town, the church elders and Jesse and his sons would come to dinner and they would eat the meat from the animal sacrifice. Everybody with me? This is what they did. They're about to hear from God. So let's get our souls right. Let's get our minds right. Let's get our spirits right. In the Old Testament, they had sacrifices. And that's what they did. Here's the story. Samuel says, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves, cleanse yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice, and then we're going to sit down and eat, and God is going to speak, and he's going to pick a king, because he said it's coming from Jesse's house. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the table, invited them to the party. Woohoo! Invited them. Here we go. We're going to feast. Ready? When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab. He took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. This must be the son. Look at him. He's good looking. He's tall. He's handsome. He's, whoo, and he's the oldest. This is God, God, this got to be it. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The word rejected there is not what it means today. 
It's not that Eliab was being rejected of God's love, his grace, or his mercy. The word rejected there means pushed aside. It's not this one, Samuel. It's not Eliab. For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I'm looking for someone who beyond appearance, who has a heart that is like mine. Well, Samuel's like, well, this is awkward. (laughs) Hey, Eliab, I'm sorry, brother. I thought it would be you. If I was God, you'd be it. (laughs) And then Jesse told his son, Abinadab, to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shema. But Samuel said, neither is this the one that the Lord has chosen. Can we all just say right now, this is awkward. Can we all just say, we're at a table, we had a sacrifice. God said the next king would come from Jesse's house. Jesse's parading the boys in front of Samuel. No, no, although that was a good looking one right there, but no, no, this is awkward. Hashtag awkward. It's like, ah, it's just like, ah, it's just weird. It's just like weird. You can see Samuel, can't you? Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, next. I mean, it's just, neither is this the one that the Lord has chosen. And in the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. You got to know that Samuel right now is going, I thought he said Bethlehem. I thought he said Jesse. I thought he said, this is all seven. All right. Maybe not Eliab, but Abinadab, man. Do you see the guy's shoulders? He's kingly. I mean, come on. All right, maybe not him. I mean, you know, Abinadab still got a weird look about him, but Shema? Look at Shema. No, all seven. And then you know. Then Samuel asks, hey, so uh, by the way, because I'm sweating right now, do you have any more kids? Do you have any other kids anywhere? <laughs> Jesse says, well, well, yeah, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. You talk about a long shot. You talk about a long shot. David isn't even considered by his own father to be worthy to be king. You talk about a long shot. David's not even invited to the party. You talk about someone who is a long shot. His whole family went, imagine. Hey, guys, listen. Samuel's coming. We got a feast going on. We're going to sacrifice. The next king is coming from this house. Guys, boys, let's go. No, David, no, 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 you stay. No, David, you stay with the sheep and the goats. It's okay. No, no, we love you, but you just stay because this is like king stuff. You stay with the sheep and the goats. That's a long shot. That's a long shot. That's a wound that goes deeper sometimes from family. Amen. Yeah. Daddy says, no, we're talking about a king here, David. You need to stay with the sheep and the goats. Not even a consideration, not even a candidate, not even looked upon by his own father or brothers to even have the potential, to even have the potential for God to raise him up. Now that's a long shot. Now that's a long shot. If you will allow for the next couple of weeks, church, if you allow God and keep your mind and your heart open to his word, no matter what long shot situation you're in, no matter what long shot mentality you have about yourself, or no matter what friends and culture and society or even your family may say about you, If you put yourself in alignment with Jesus Christ, what will happen is you will go from someone who's not even invited to the party, you will go from that to someone who everyone else waits on at the party. How do we know that? Samuel asked, are these all your sons? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep. Send for him at once. 
And Samuel says, we will not sit down to eat until he arrives. Because when God takes you from a long shot to his sure shot, you go from someone who is seen and being looked at down everyone else's nose, you go when you're in alignment with him, you go from someone who is nothing but a sheep herder to an honored guest at a party. Because that's the word. See, so David's life, oh, we love it, little boy, slingshot, rocks, all oh, this is awesome. Running to the front line, killing the giant. The series is going to be challenging because we love this story and we all want to go, go through circumstances and issues in our life. We're all going to face a giant one day. And we want to be like David, amen? We want to be like David. But, he, uh, but are we willing to do what David did to be who God made David to be? That's why this long shot series is so challenging. See, we want to be that giant slayer. We don't want people to think of us as a long shot. I don't want to think of myself as a long shot. But are we willing to do the things that David did to go from a long shot to God's short shot? Because that's what the series is going to cover. All of a sudden, he goes, imagine me and David. Ooh. What's up, guys? Why is everybody standing up? Why is everybody standing up? I, listen, what's going on? What's up? I got a lot of sheep. I got a lot of goats. What's going on? Hurry up. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, David. I got a plan for you. How do we move? How does God take someone from a long shot? to a short shot. It's in this story. First thing, right here. He says this. So Jesse sent for David. He was dark and handsome, of Italian descent, with beautiful eyes. <laughs> just kidding, I'm just, it's my spiritual imagination. <laughs> and the Lord said, this is the one. It's him. This is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had and brought, and he brought on his trip and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day. The day that God moves David from not even being considered a contender to this mighty empowered boy to become a stately king, a man after God's own heart. How does that happen? Well, it starts here. Jesse, when asked by Samuel, hey, do you have any more sons? Do you have any more sons? They were still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. What you never find in what we say at the chapel all the time is that God's word is perfect. It's his voice to us today. It addresses every situation that we deal with. Every word that is in the Bible is exactly where it's supposed to be. And every word that's not in the Bible is not supposed to be. It's perfect. It's perfect. What you never find... Hey, do you have any more sons? Yeah, we got, yeah, but he's like the small, he's the runt. He's the kind of the guy, we, you, you, you don't want, yeah, I mean, he's, but he's in the field with the sheep and the goats. Go get him. He's in the field. What you never find is David going, I'm not going. Oh, so now you want me at the party. So now you need me. You know, you don't hear that. You don't hear a one line about David's bitterness. You don't hear one line about David's envy. You don't hear one line about David saying, Abinadab, I am way better looking than Abinadab. Has anybody seen his lips? You don't ever hear one line about him saying, Shema, he might be good looking, but he's stunad. He don't, he don't get it. You don't ever hear one line in the Bible about David's attitude. What you find in the Bible is that David, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what party he's not invited to, regardless of how people think of him, regardless how people don't count him out, what you find about David is he is continually faithful doing right where he is and doing what God wants him to do. 
See, because what happens, what happens when God moves a long shot to his sure shot, God's favor finds a faithful heart. God's favor finds a faithful heart. He's not looking for a perfect person. He's not looking for the smartest. He's looking for some, because he's looking for, listen, he's looking for someone who has a heart like God's heart. And if there's one thing I've learned, and I can tell you I've probably made more mistakes and mishaps than everyone in this room. But what I have found over the years is that regardless of his timing and regardless of how God does things, God is always faithful. God is always faithful. I may stamp my feet and cross my arms and pound dirt and hit the wall. Where are you? How come you didn't do it by Thursday at 3 o'clock? Or I may kick something and slam a door and go, I wanted that, but I didn't want it done that way. But what it will always be is God is faithful to who he is and what he says he's going to do. Because I'm looking for a man who has a heart I'm looking for a person to take from a long shot to a sure shot. I'm looking for a person who has a heart like mine, and my heart is faithful. And what you find is David, he's just out with the sheep. He's out with the sheep. He's not griping. He's not bitter. He's not envious. He's faithful where he is. I may not be invited to the party. I may not understand why they didn't consider me. I may not get it, and it is hurtful, but I'll tell you what, I'm still going to be the best sheep herder right now where I am to the glory of God because I'm faithful. That's it. What you find is God's favor. David did nothing to become king. His resume would say one word, well, technically two, sheep herder. In Brooklyn, it's sheep herder, okay? So it's one word, all right? That's all. But what he was, not what he did. Lean in. What he was, not what he did. He was faithful. Later on in the story, what you'll find is Samuel, the prophet, sends David to King Saul to soothe him because he's tormented by bad thoughts. And the only thing that soothes King Saul's mind is David playing his harp. And Saul says, listen, stay here with me. And David says, no, I must tend the sheep and the goats. Faithful. You see, we want to be a giant killer. We want to be a sling stone throwing giant killer. But are we willing to do what David did? Are we willing to be faithful in the sunshine and the storm? Are we willing to be faithful in serving God, in talking to God, in praying to God when he doesn't show up when we want and he doesn't answer things the way we want? Because apparently... A faithful heart, I like to say it, it's a faithful heart that gets God's attention. Whoa. Because you don't have any big special skills. But man, look at his faithfulness. Look at his faithfulness. I'm willing to serve God right where I am with what I have like I had it all, but with whatever I have and where I am, I'm serving and praying and understanding he loves me and I love it. I'm faithful to my relationship with God regardless of what's around me. I'm faithful. And the story says, ooh, I'll use that to take someone from a long shot to a short shot. I'll use that to lift someone up who everyone else disregarded. God's favor finds a faithful heart because God's faithful. 
Second thing. We know Jesus talks about this all the way through Scripture. He says, well done. He's teaching, he's teaching a parable, which is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. He's teaching this parable and he says this, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little bit, just where you are, right in your space right now. Now, because I could trust you with that, of course I'm going to give you more. Faithful for, with where I am right now. God moving us from a long shot situation, a long shot mentality, or how people see us as a long shot. First thing, first ingredient he looks for is faithfulness. Second, Samuel took the flask of oil, of olive oil. He had and bought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. What you don't find is David going, ho, 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 hold on a second. King, did you say king? Yeah, I'm like really good with the sheep and the goat thing. I'm real comfortable with that. I like it. Those guys, sheep and goats, they like me. I know them. They know me. It's comfortable. It's what I'm used to. See, that's why the word of God is so incredible. I'm, I'm comfortable here. I'm used to this. I like it. I got a little bit of a proven track record with it. I don't really want anything else. King, I don't know if you know this, but I am the youngest and I am the smallest. By the way, I'm not saying yes yet. Let me see the job description. Because I don't want to get myself into something. No. What you find in the story is that David steps forward. And Samuel anoints him with oil. And the power of God falls on David. Because what happens is God's favor finds a willing heart. God's favor finds a willing heart. I may not understand it. I may not be able to wrap my head around it. I may not be able to make sense of it. But if you, Samuel, the representative of God, if you, Samuel, the person who speaks for God, if you, Samuel, the person who represents what God wants to do, if you, Samuel, say to do it, well, forget what I think. Let me step forward and pour that oil on. Let's go. Because what God says, I'm willing See, if you, if you'll pray and invite me into your life or your situation, I'll do things like you've never seen before. But you got to be willing. See, unfortunately, we live in a culture right now that says, hey, unless I can understand it and make sense of it or reason it or wrap my brain around it, I don't want any part of it. The problem with that mentality is it cuts out faith. And I don't mean stupid or silly faith. But I mean the faith that's based on his word. What you find is David's willing. Hey, look, I'm just a sheep boy. I mean, you know how people think about me. Like, my brothers and my dad didn't invite me to the party. I don't really have a lot of skill. Pretty good with the sheep. But a lot of people are. But what you find is David saying, I'm willing. I'm willing to step forward. I'm willing to move in. I'm willing to lean in. Because God is saying, Oh, you thought, God is saying, oh, you thought you were taking care of sheep and goats. <laughs> but God is saying, but I was training a king. So you think you were in the pasture just to take care of sheep and goats. <laughs> but God's saying, no, you're just not a sheep herder and a goat. No, what you are is a king. And that's not wasting time, that's training time. That's what God's saying. See, and, but you have to understand because God always has the biggest and best picture for us. Well, I don't know how I can see myself out of it. I don't know how I can see myself. That's not your job. 
It's God's job to see it. It's our job to be faithful and willing. It's Bible to move from a long shot to a short shot. To move from a guy who wasn't invited as a contender to a boy who picks up a rock and slays a giant. A long shot to a short shot. We are now officially, and with everyone watching online, in all the services that we've done already, you're on the path to understanding what it means to go from a long shot to when God moves you. How does God move us in and out of situations? How does God work in us and through us? How does God use us right where we are? You're on that road. Stay on the road with the Lord. Because it's his word. And he's speaking. Amen? Bow your heads. Let me pray for you.